SCP-096, The Shy Guy. In the SCP universe, violent monsters are more or less a dime a dozen. Much of the SCP Foundation's resources are spent containing creatures that would happily murder the global population, given the chance. With this in mind then, what exactly does it take for one of these monsters to stand out from the rest? SCP-096 is an early SCP, and yet it's managed to both stick around in popular discussion and garner one of the highest ratings across the whole site. Let's look at what makes this monster unique, and some of the interactions that the Foundation has had with it. SCP-096 is a humanoid creature, standing approximately 2.38 meters tall, or close to 8 feet. It is pale, hairless, possesses very little muscle mass, and its arms are extremely out of proportion in length each being one and a half meters long. Its eyes are also devoid of pigmentation, possibly suggesting that it is blind, and it is capable of opening its jaw up to four times the norm of an average human. Normally, 096 is completely docile, spending its time in its cell pacing across the floor. It shows no signs of possessing any higher brain functions, and the Foundation does not consider it to be sapient. However, when anyone, anywhere, views 096's face, whether directly, through a camera, a recording, or even a photograph, 096 will immediately enter a state of emotional distress. It will begin screaming and crying, covering its face with its hands, lasting for a minute or two. Following this, 096 will begin running towards the individual that viewed its face. So far, the SCP Foundation has found no way to physically impede 096, and it's capable of running in excess of 100 kilometers per hour. 096 seems to have innate knowledge of when anyone sees its face, regardless of distance, and knows exactly how to find them. A test was done by sending a D-Class in a deep sea submersible 10,800 meters down into the Tonga Trench by New Zealand, hundreds of kilometers away from 096's position. The D-Class was instructed to view a photograph that had been taken of 096, at which point 096 quickly broke containment and began running in the direction of the D-Class. The path had been cleared of civilians, and the Foundation tracked 096 by satellite. Meanwhile, the D-Class was instructed to sketch a drawing of the photograph which is then sent to the surface in a watertight container. Reaching the Tonga Trench, 096 begins diving down, finally reaching the submersible. It tears it open, the D-Class dies, and 096 is recovered. Viewing the sketches of 096 cause no adverse reaction. When 096 inevitably reaches a target that has seen its face, it kills the target, and then does something to the body that leaves no trace. It's likely that this is something more horrific than simply consumption. Afterwards, if there is no one else that has seen its face, 096 will return to its docile state, and proceed to return to its natural habitat, an expunged location, but likely a mountain range. Retrieval of 096 is considered the highest priority to the Foundation, due to the risk of a mass chain reaction of people seeing 096. We're then given an interview between a doctor and a former captain of a retrieval team that was sent to initially retrieve 096. The retrieval took place in an extremely cold location, but 096 did not seem bothered by this, simply wandering the area. One of the retrieval squads landed their helicopter and approached the target to apprehend it. While doing so, the captain received a call, causing him to turn away. At the same time, 096 turned around, causing the rest of the squad to see its face. The captain says it began screaming and crying, sounding much more like a human than an animal, and they fired upon it as it tore off the leg of one of the agents. 
The team utilized heavy weaponry against 096 to no effect, including an anti-tank gun that destroyed half of its torso, and roughly 600 rounds from a 50 caliber Gatling gun. It seems as though 096's flesh and organs are vulnerable to conventional weaponry, but its bones were completely unaffected, and it continued to slaughter the squad. The second squad arrived and placed a bag over its head, causing it to become docile. Somehow, the captain managed to survive by never actually viewing its face. The interview led to the doctor requesting that 096 be terminated as soon as possible. Terminations are not often attempted at the SCP Foundation, going against their mission statement, and often the Foundation doesn't even possess the means to terminate most SCPs. That's a big part of what makes 096 unique, as we're given a lengthy log of an incident that convinces the O5 Council that 096 should be terminated. This itself is not the termination attempt, which, depending on your canon view, has not actually occurred, but it does add quite a bit to 096's story. The incident begins at 096's containment cell, as a dozen or so researchers are looking at monitors in the adjacent control booth. Suddenly, a wall of the containment cell begins bulging outwards as 096 fights against it. 096 soon breaks the wall, and two security teams enter the room to try and subdue or tranquilize it, to no effect. Most of the security team and the researchers have viewed 096's face at this point, and so the rooms are flooded with a nerve agent. Two minutes later, 096 escapes from the research site and begins running at high speeds across the surrounding desert. A recontainment team proceeds to chase after 096 in a helicopter and attempts to stop it with a modified anti-material rifle. A shot hits 096 in the leg, causing it to stumble for a moment but not slow down, and a shot to the head causes it to fall and roll, but quickly gets back to its feet and continues running. The Foundation begins trying to figure out where and who the target was that caused the breach, and clears out population centers in 096's path, the process overseen by a Dr. Alexi. Another researcher working on 096, Dr. Dan, was in a mountain range trying to find out more about 096's origins. Dr. Dan and Dr. Alexi had designed a new piece of technology to help with containing 096, called Project Scramble. Project Scramble was an eyepiece containing a microprocessor that constantly analyzed its viewing field for the facial features of 096. If detected, it would scramble 096's face into an unrecognizable mess before the light reached the wearer's eye, protecting them from 096's effect. Unfortunately, it didn't work. Mobile Task Force Tau-1 was also sent in to recontain 096, equipped with Project Scramble visors. By this point, 096 is outrunning the helicopters and is tearing up a highway. 096's travel of direction caused it to pass through a few towns, and so the MTF is forced to gather up all the townspeople and blindfold them, so that they don't see 096's face. The fourth town, however, holds the original target of 096's rage. All of the citizens of the town are gathered in the town square, blindfolded, and are told by the MTF to stay where they are and keep their blindfolds on, otherwise they will be shot. As 096 comes over a hill and lets out a loud shrieking sound, several of the civilians are shot, presumably for removing their blindfolds. 096 barrels into the crowd, throwing people aside and trampling others while it looks for its target, and more shots are heard. Finally, 096 locates its target, a middle-aged man, and the camera feed goes out once it grabs him. We learn from the commander of MTF Tau-1 that the target was a mountaineer that took a trip to a mountain range, again likely 096's natural habitat, and took a picture of the landscape. Apparently, this picture contained four pixels of 096's face in the background. The commander guesses that at some point after the fact, 
the target looked at the picture and noticed the four pixels, without actually realizing what he was looking at. The team's scramble gear picked up the pixels right away while looking at the photo, but he goes on to say that scramble was a colossal failure that led to the death of most of his team. He says they could have just put a bag over his head, but instead they had to use the idiotic scramble gear. Dr. Dan explains that Scramble failed because they didn't fully understand how 096 worked. He says that in theory it should have worked, but before the computers could actually scramble the image, a split second of light would hit the eye, activating 096's effect. He says that the Mountaineer went on his trip over a decade ago, and had the picture hanging in his house the entire time. He wonders how many other ticking time bomb photographs are out there that contain 096's face and are waiting to be noticed. He repeats his request to have 096 terminated. We learn that after killing its original target, along with most of the MTF, 096 went back to the highway to finish off everyone else that had seen its face. It was found sitting on the highway after tearing apart a minivan and they managed to get a bag over its head. The agent who bagged 096 was later found to have committed suicide, and it's implied that he witnessed 096 doing something horrific to an infant. We're given a short separate log taken from a confiscated tape belonging to CNN. It shows a field reporter discussing a crashed plane with a large hole in the side of it, and only three bodies were found inside compared to the expected 20. Apparently, 096 is capable of reaching targets in the air, as well as on the ground and underwater, making it even more dangerous. Dr. Oleksii, who earlier in the log said that he was in a break room getting coffee when 096 breached confinement, is caught in his lie, as there is no break room at that site. He proceeds to confess to both his and Dr. Dan's involvement in causing the breach. It seems that they were both convinced of the need to terminate 096, but the O5 Council wasn't going for it, so they wanted to show how dangerous it could be. How exactly they engineered the breach is unknown, but it is likely they made Project Scramble faulty on purpose, or knew it wouldn't work. Their plan ultimately worked, horrific as it was, and the Council decides to approve their request for 096's termination, along with the termination of the two doctors. So far, there hasn't been any document written by the original 096 author going over its termination, or attempted termination, but SCP canon being what it is, you can decide for yourself how you think that played out. SCP-096 is an early SCP, and shows a lot of hallmarks of an early SCP, but it is nonetheless a great way to get into the weird world of SCP. Why does this monster exist? Why does it hate having its face seen? And are there more than one of them in the world? Questions like these, with no answers, are what draw most people into the mysteries of the SCP universe. And even after nearly a decade, 096 is still drawing people in.